to ABC World, the voice of Pan-Africanism, bringing you the latest news highlights of the hour. I am Tabitha John to stay with us, commencing with the top stories. A scholar says Ethiopia's quest for a direct sea outlet has the potential to transform the economic landscape of the Horn of Africa. And the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres says phasing out fossil fuel is key to COP28 success. The State Minister for Political and Economic Diplomacy at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Ethiopia, Ambassador Ms. Ganwar said BRICS plus BLOC is an important platform to renew multilateralism and make it more inclusive and fairer to reflect the legitimate interest of the global south. The Minister of State made the remark at a session titled BRICS Rising Influence in a Multipolar International Order at the 21st Annual Doha Forum 2023 in Doha, Qatar, which is being held from 10 to 11 December 2023. Ambassador Ms. Gano underscored that the BRICS Plus expansion will advance increased economic dynamism and growth by tapping into the potential of new market opportunities. In concurrence with Ms. Gano's remarks, policymakers and experts from several countries speaking at the Doha Forum 2023 highlighted the potential of the BRICS group to establish trade and investment alliances, fostering economic and social development in a multipolar world. Panelists on the sidelines of COP28 emphasize the need for immediate action and long-term commitment to supporting smallholder farmers and developing resilient food systems in the face of climate change. The Ethiopian Green Legacy Pavilion hosted a panel discussion under the theme of climate change adaptation and food, agriculture and water nexus, local actions and smallholder family livelihoods on the sidelines of COP28 Climate Summit. The panel discussion was organized by the population Population Health and Environment Ethiopia Consortium, which aimed to explore the critical role of local actions and smallholder families in building resilience to climate change. The discussion highlighted the importance of local action in climate adaptations, as well as stressed the need for community-based solutions tailored to local contexts, including climate smart agriculture, early warning systems, among others. Ethiopian-American mathematics professor Mulatu Lemma has been selected as the top 2023 professor of the year by the International Association of Top Professionals. Professor Lemma earned his bachelor's and master's degrees in mathematics from Addis Ababa University. Meanwhile, he earned a PhD in mathematics from Kent State University in Ohio. He has taught mathematics for over 30 years, including the last 28 years at Savannah State University. It is learned that the association honors professionals worldwide based on professional accomplishments, academic achievements, leadership abilities, longevity in the field, other affiliations, and community contributions. Located about 500 kilometers from Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa, and about 35 kilometers downstream from the town of Bahirda and Lake Tana, is the mighty, mystical Blue Nile Falls. The locals call it Tisa Bay Falls and is believed to have some special powers. Tisa Bay means water that smokes. Woohoo! I can see the water already. Yeah, this is blue. Blue, this water is not, not blue. blue. <laughs> Brown. Because, Brown Nile. <laughs> you know is this the Nile? This is the Blue Nile. 
This is the blue knife. This is the blue knife. It's in Washington. Yes. Thank you. So I'm going to buy one of these for entertainment because he has entertained me even if I don't know how to blow it. Pick a nice one. <laughs> oh. A bit of a cowboy. He's got his own style of doing things. I told Pasquale I was going to run every inch of this river. Now Welcome back. Research consultant and TVET lecturer in Kenya, Daniel Atieno Aoko, stressed that Ethiopia's quest for a direct sea outlet has a potential to transform the economic landscape of the entire Horn region. Talking to EBC, the research consultant explained ensuring access to sea outlet helps Ethiopia to play a pivotal role in promoting trade and investment infrastructure in the region. Tegu Sarnisa has the following account. Economic integration or regional integration among us nations helps reduce or eliminate trade barriers and also helps block of countries to agree upon putting in place certain physical policies. Free movement of goods, people, labor services and capital from one partner state to another as well as the right to establishment and residence without restrictions avails itself right after a group of countries signed regional agreements such as African continental free trade area and etc. Approached by EBC research consultant and TVT lecturer in Kenya, Daniel Otenio Aoko, indicated that root causes in the region which can hinder economic integration need to be identified and addressed. For us to ratify the dichotomy and volatility in the region of Eastern Africa, it requires a concerted effort. We need to address the root causes, and that is instability, and we need to foster on an economy that is all-inclusive. Mm -hmm. And we need to promote what we term as regional cooperation with the diverse stakeholders. Now, some of the strategies that we need to use as countries are we promote good governance and the rule of law. We have to establish strong and transparent institutions that are accountable, that can create as essential and stable and predictable investment for economic development. We must address issues of corruption. We must uphold human rights. We must ensure independence of our judicial systems if we need to establish a good governance. The scholar further reiterated that as the second largest economy in the region, he says it will plays a pivotal role in promoting trade investment infrastructure in the region. As the region's second largest economy, Ethiopia has made substantial contributions in promoting trade, investment and infrastructure. The key contributions that Ethiopia has made in terms of economic integration are one, the regional infrastructure development. Ethiopia has invested heavily in developing regional infrastructure projects. This is including transport networks, power grids, communication systems. These projects have improved connectivity and facilitated trade and reduced transport costs across the region. He also went on saying that Ethiopia's cost for direct sea outlet has a potential to transform the economic landscape of the region. Overall, Ethiopia's access to sea outlet has a potential to transform the economic landscape of the Horn of Africa, creating a more interconnected, prosperous and stable region for all of us. And finally, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres said on Monday one key to success of the COP28 climate summit was for nations to reach agreement on the need to phase out fossil fuel, albeit with countries possibly moving at different rates. Johannes Fentahun has more. Guterres rushed back less than a day before the talks in Dubai were supposed to end, and he continued that there were still large gaps 
preventing a consensus. And he said to the media, we are still in a race against the time. COP28 is scheduled to wrap up tomorrow, but there are still large gaps that need to be bridged. Now is the time for maximum ambition and maximum flexibility. Ministers and negotiators must move beyond arbitrary red lines, entrenched positions and blocking tactics. It's time to go into overdrive to negotiate in good faith and rise to the challenge set by COP President Dr. Sultan Ahmed Al Jaber. It's time to seek compromise for solutions without compromising on the science or compromising on the need for the highest ambition. In our fractured and divided world, COP28 can show that multilateralism remains our best hope to tackle global challenges. A single-minded focus on tackling the root causes of climate crisis, fossil fuel production and consumption is what Guterres, who has made climate change a key priority, urged negotiators to have in mind. The global stock take must offer a clear plan for a tripling of renewables, a doubling of energy efficiency, and a single-minded focus on tackling the root cause of the climate crisis, fossil fuel production and consumption. He called on the summit to recognize the need to phase out all fossil fuels, a stance opposed by oil producers led by Saudi Arabia. But it is essential that the global stock take recognizes the need to phase out all fossil fuels on a time frame consistent with 1.5 degree limit and to accelerate a just, equitable and orderly energy transition for all. A transition that takes into account the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities and the respective capabilities in light of national circumstances, not to reduce ambition, but to combine ambition and equity. In his call for flexibility, Guterres said there should also be attention to the concerns of fossil fuel producers and that not all countries would have the same immediate responsibility. That's all we had for now. I'm Tabitha John. Thank you for watching. Have a good time and take care.